Ciao, buongiorno a tutti ragazzi. We hope you are all well, we hope you are all healthy and we hope you are all maintaining your mental health and your relationships with your loved ones at this boring, disastrous but necessary time. Shout out to my two guests, Alessandro from San Francisco. How are you and how are your family, bro? So far so good, thank God. Um, everybody here and in Italy are well and I hope they keeps going like this. How about you guys? Bruno's on the line. Bruno, chime in. How are you all? It has been way too long. And um, like you said, it's it's been a terrible couple of months, but necessary just to say the least. Um, the welfare of our players, our fans, is much more important than playing a 90-minute match once a week. But yeah, look, uh, here in Australia, Sydney, um, you know, Anthony, you live merely five minute walk from my house and it's just eerie it's it's quiet um but like you said great time to spend time with your loved ones and make the most of what is a terrible situation absolutely and even though it is a sensitive issue we're going to cap it at that we're going to keep it at cultural we're going to keep it at inter and we're going to start off with letting you guys know that you've got to stick around at the end of this short podcast from alessandro bruno and myself to hear another great interview with our friend and correspondent fabrizio Biazin. so grazie to fabrizio for that stick around and talk about it um i've been very well myself and I'm really happy to just throw it over to Alessandro to get this particular podcast started. And Alessandro, talk to us a little bit about what you and Fabrizio spoke about so that we can dissect it in English for our listeners who won't be able to exactly tune in to the Italian audio experience later on. Absolutely. So first of all, uh, we, we uh, spoke a little bit about the general situation <laughs> there in Italy. Um, there... They are about 30 days into the quarantine and the situation is, is improving slowly and uh, now it's kind of stable for the new patient and it's improving for the, um, the people who's getting better. Uh, so uh, that point, at, at this point, the only thing they're doing, they're just staying home, shelter in place uh, in Italy and uh, Pretty much is the same here in San Francisco and I guess everywhere else, honestly, at this point. Um, after that, um, I asked him, like, the, the, the main question was, when is Messi coming? That can sound like a pretty stupid question, uh, but uh, it contains a lot of um, small ones, meaning... The Messi question is pretty much like, when are we going back to normal? When are we going back? Um, talking about transfer market and the new, the new season or the old season. So there, there is a lot of um, small little question in that. Uh, but the answer, the, the Messi question saying that uh, Monati was talking about that and it's not the first time. Uh, but he personally thinks that he will probably will not leave Barcelona, uh, especially because uh, he built a whole career there, the family is there. It's not, there is no reason at this point of his career to, um, to change. And I think it's more likely that the whole uh, staff and pre presidency will change, uh, but... Um, than Messi leaving, so uh, and um, it's not for a financial problem because, uh, as we know, at the end of the year he could leave uh, as a free agent, basically. But um, it's more like a personal choice. Um, if Messi decided to leave, then you know that's a different story. But as a, as like yesterday night when he posted on his Instagram that this is, these are all fake news, um, I, I would say that, um, I mean, uh, he's not going anywhere. Um, then we, we uh, move on talking about the market situation and um, what I asked him, do you think we're going to... Uh, 
finished the, the previous season and uh, he basically said that um, in his opinion uh, is not reasonable, doable finished uh, that season uh, trying to play more than 120 games in a few months during the summertime with no supporters, no, no uh, um, VAR. Um, it will be too complicated and we're going to um, create some problem for the next season that is actually the one to preserve. And um, that all the other sports or the other activity are understanding this and Kaj is the only one that is trying to do everything to finish the season. And um, but nobody uh, decided anything so far. So these are all, you know, chit chat. And um, on this subject, um, Bruno, what do you think? What, what's your opinion? Oh, look, I think um, just to your point about Messi, he's like the Javier Zanetti. He, you, you, you can't see him leaving. And I think at this current point in time, um, I saw an article in regards to the age of the current Barcelona squad. Um, they're, they're very old. Uh, the majority of their main starting eleven and Messi's pivotal not just in being a player, but he's a pivotal bargaining chip to lure a lot of players. Oh, you want to play alongside Messi? Come here. And I just think um, he's built his legacy at that club. He, you know, if he was to move, it would have happened a couple of years ago, not now. Um, and especially with the current, uh, I don't know if there's any substance behind the rumors, but. Um, name has returned to the Camp Nou. Um, I just can't see Messi leaving. Uh, in regards to the current season, I just think it's a write-off now. Uh, you know, I've, uh, as good as the season was, you know, Juventus were had some competition this season. Um, Lazio right up their ass, and you had Inter as well. So it was it, it was an interesting and intriguing season, not just for the top, for the bottom, and especially you know Atalanta, Roma, Milan, Napoli. They were all neck and neck for those final positions. Um, and you got to remember, if we you got to look at the players as well. You're gonna have. Um, like you said, over 100 games played in the space of a month, if not just a bit more, players will get injured. And that, that will hamper transfer market and all of that. And not just that, we can't impact next season. We can't let what the current world situation is um, impact following seasons just to try and make up for the season that just happened. Now, you've got to remember, they've moved the Euro competition from this year to next year. So we can't really delay next season because we haven't got that buffer room. And then the following year, 2022, we're, we're going to see a completely different um, layout for the season because you've got to remember the Qatar World Cup will be held in the December month, not the traditional June, July. So that's going to be another... Um, Another factor that needs to be counted in because we delay this, we, we, we proceed with this season, we've got to give our players some time off. We can't just finish on a Sunday and then the following Sunday we're starting round one again. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff that needs to get, happen between now and then. But at the same time, I, I, think, it sh I think it should be called off. Um, get your tape players back into camp, even if it means we have an extended transfer window. You know, it, it, it's just as exciting. And, you know, you're going to have players who are wanting to move. There's a fair few free transfers that are of high regards, which I really consider fantastic players. Um, let, let, let's, even if you start the transfer window earlier um, and just get the, get the ball rolling again, mm -hmm. have a nice... Um, I know they normally used to they normally do the International Champions Cup Let, let's extend that a bit let's uh, have that going a bit more where you have the b b biggest clubs from around the world playing against each other just to get the ball rolling get, get the atmosphere happening again but look 
It is heartbreaking, but at the end of the day, someone's got to make the call. And like you said, culture are always behind when it comes to the rest of the world. And at the moment, the only other league in the world that's making Italy look half good in regards to this decision is uh, England, who are considering to play 450 games in approximately eight weeks. So I think that's a lot of Liverpool fans talking there. But at the end of the day... um, my opinion doesn't matter. Uh, it comes down to what the heads of really want. What do you think, Anthony, in the scope of all of this? Well said, gents. Um, I think that in terms of finishing the season, first of all, you would look at really cramming in a a real a real form of culture where physically the athletes won't be anywhere near their best. It would also be risky due to the lack of training that they would have going back into it uh, in terms of injuries, especially for our beloved Inter. We seem to get injured in, you know, if it rains. So I wouldn't want that. In terms of finishing the season for logistical and statistical purposes, I don't think that matters that much. But apparently... We need it for placings and for European coefficient and to see who gets relegated. So as long as the European teams, uh, sorry, the European countries can come together to an agreement as to how they're going to work out the rest of the season and to how it's going to go, then it should be fine. Now, you can't really do one thing differently for one league and do it for the next. So while everyone might say, yeah, we will call the season off, but we'll give Liverpool the title because they're ahead by 22 points, then you could argue that they have to do that for everybody who's finishing first at that point in time in their league. But you can't do that in a league like Italy, where the margin is only one point from first to second. And you can't do that when Spain, I think they're equal, or it's just one point. I think Germany, it's less than two points. So I I really think you just have to cancel it. Now, I don't know that much in terms about what goes on with TV deals, marketing deals, and how much money is bound to lose. Like how much money is about to be lost in terms of rights, agents, everything. The whole business and backside of football. I don't know how much money is about to be lost if you can seasons. But maybe it's just money that that needs to be lost. Because as you said, Bruno, we've got next season to think about. Like the, the more you keep worrying and keep delaying decisions about this season, the more you start to compromise the integrity of next season. Now we've still got a chance to have a fully clean, beautiful um, campionato 2020, 2021. So that's what I think we should be focusing on doing. Once again, I don't know the inside outs of how much money is going to be lost in which departments of sport. If you were to cancel seasons, I'm talking the NBA, our Australian NRL, AFL, overseas, baseball, whatever other sports. I don't know how much money is being lost and what sort of insurance they're covered by. I know that a lot of teams around the world in many codes have just sat their players down and said, all right, so far you need to cut 30% of your salary and everyone's just pretty much agreed. Um, So, yeah, that's about it. Did I miss anything? Was there some other part to the question, Alessandro? Well, the the first part was about Messi. I don't know if you have any anything to say about that. Oh yeah, Messi coming. Oh yeah, hundred percent. He'll be here, and um, Conte will play him at right wing back in a three five two. <laughs> so yeah, nah, it's not <laughs> okay. <gonna>. No, <laughs> nah, I, I really don't think Messi's coming anywhere. I'll, I'll just agree with what you guys said. Um, Messi, he is an image of the club. He's not going to go anywhere. He will be there for life. He'll retire at Barcelona almost in the same fashion that Iniesta. Um, did pretty much. That, that's my opinion on the whole Messi thing. It's a great way to fill up news headlines and if Cristiano Ronaldo was not playing at Juventus in Italy, Messi would not be linked to him. Messi would be linked to the rival club of the club that Cristiano Ronaldo would be currently playing for. All right. Um, then um, I continue the interview um, thinking about the um, legal situation pretty much of the players contracts uh, because i mean in theory um if that they they will end at the end of the season but when is the end of the season so uh, i was trying to explain that um fifa decided to extend uh the contracts until um the when until the end of the season whenever it will be 
uh, or unless they decide to uh, finish the season here. But it's, you know, it's a gray area at the moment. Um, but the idea is to sooner or later end the season. And when that's over, the contract is going to end and they're going to have a big transfer window. Um, and uh, we were, you know, uh, thinking about how a typical it will be and uh, how uh, would be, would be mainly through exchange of player rather than having big amount of money spent for one player or, or more and um, and a lot of player that wants to move probably they they will be forced to stay because uh, there is no uh, not a single club that is not being um, you know, uh, hit pretty hard by by this situation. Uh, and he was saying that if there are like clubs uh, at the top, there are not uh, that they can survive. Uh, the problem is, is with all the other clubs um, in Serie A, but especially in Serie B, G, D, all the minor leagues that uh, probably they they cannot survive. So what's going to happen? It's going to happen that probably uh, we need to bring soccer back to um, how it was many, many years ago. And we need to cut uh, the fee for the agents. We need to cut the prices. And, you know, we, we need to make it a little bit more reasonable. And, uh, you know, that, that's the hope. Um, I don't know if uh, Anthony or, or Bruno wants to add anything uh, about this, like, oh. contra situation or anything about the I'll, 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 I'll add it, actually, before yeah. Bruno. Oh, okay. I, was actually talk, I was actually talking about this with my mate last night. Um, is this going to be a way where football just kind of resets its market value in a sense that after this, the price of these players is going to drop so significantly. Your $80 million players will now be available for $40 million. Your $50 million players are going to be available for, sorry, euro, maybe I should say euro. Your 80 million euros are available for about 35 million euros. Your 40 million euros are available for about 20 million euros. As Alessandro said, it's, it's going back to maybe a decade, a decade or so ago where prices... Yeah, they looked expensive on the surface, but we're at the end of the day, these are the prices. But the prices we see now, they're ridiculous. They're ruining sports. And it only takes one bad deal to break the whole stigma in the sport. And I'll give you an example. You get Alexa Sanchez going to Manchester United for $360,000 um, a month or whatever, or for a week or whatever it was. And that breaks up the whole stigma of the wage structure in that dressing room and then it disrupts the weight structure of other dressing rooms as well other players who are scoring five or six times more goals or are registering five or six times more assists would be saying how come i'm only getting ninety thousand a week when he's getting three hundred thousand a week it really disrupts the game to a point where it's detrimental to the field performance as well it's not just backroom problems so i, I would I'd chime in and say to alessandro yeah that would be my opinion i really really hope that if something positive does come out of all this mess that it could be a nice way to logically and rationally reset the way that money is circulated around football. Bruno, sorry, man, off you go. Oh, look, in the perfect world, yeah, I agree with what you had to say there, Anthony. But unfortunately, we don't live in the perfect world and you're going to have teams like Manchester United, like Real Madrid, like Barcelona flexing their muscle to lure the big players to their clubs. You're going to have, um, there's been speculation since Dortmund signed Haaland that Real Madrid were going to come and offer him double his salary. Now, what's, to, what's going to stop Real Madrid from doing that now? Right? Uh, ultimately, it's, it's in the perfect world, yeah. You look at Lukaku, we spent how much for him? Close to 80 million. And he was our record-breaking signing ever. And you look at that list of our best ever signings, it included Christian Vieri, the, the great Ronaldo, the best Ronaldo there was. It, it included some of the b best players you've ever seen. And it, it was amazing to think that those players were valued so little back in their day. But right now, and I, I'm saying this from an economic perspective, 
you're going to have the return of um, football and fans are going to flock to it, right? Fans are going to go crazy. Now, moving a bit off topic, you look at Dana White, the president and owner of the UFC. He has been fighting so hard to have his main event, um, which was for the middleweight title um, or featherweight title, one of them, uh, lightweight, one of them, whatever the title it was, to go and go. And he said, why would I not want this to happen now? People are craving sport. This will be the biggest event in history, even if the fights are shit. Now, I got to agree with it. But you got to think, once sport does return, people are going to look for that. That A lot of people, and I know for a lot of us, um, you know, especially here in Australia, we were waking up at three, four, five in the morning to watch these big games. And you're just going to have more and more people doing it because you don't know what you've got until it's gone. And people are starting to realize I've seen a lot of the forums that just don't know what to talk about anymore. And I just feel, you know, in the perfect world, what you guys are saying would be amazing, but I can't see it happening. Um, I can't see player values because you're going to have those big teams flexing their muscle. They're gonna, you're going to have those big teams turning around saying, well, I can afford to give you this, so that is what I am going to give you. And you can't stop that. That's why Real Madrid is as great as what they are. That's why Manchester United dominated for as long as what they did because they had that muscle to flex. And ultimately, I feel that, um, yes, the contracts of current players should be extended to the end of the season, albeit whether it is now or naturally when it was meant to finish. Um, If they do decide to play into August, the contract of players should continue into August only if the rest of Europe is compliant with the same basis. Whatever applies to one league needs to apply to all the leagues. Um, But effectively, I can't really see much changing in the background. Like I'm seeing reports Barcelona wanting to snag Harry Kane, uh, Real Madrid, sorry, wanting to snag Harry Kane from um, Tottenham. You've got Barcelona and this is the only rumour I've heard that's linked to Inter other than Messi wanting to purchase Lautaro Martinez. Um, You know, and for the money which we're asking. Now, a lot of teams will use this as a bargaining chip and say, well, I haven't seen your player play for four months, so how am I meant to stop that from how am I meant to invest, you know, $80 million into it when I haven't seen what they can do for the last four months? Have they been reasonable? Have they been, have they been smart with what they're doing? Have they been keeping up their fitness? You look at England, you've got um, Kyle Walker, Manchester City defender, England defender, hosting sex orgies at his house during this quarantine lockdown. You've got Grealish, who was linked to move to Manchester United in the summer caught drunk on the sidewalk in the, in what's supposed to be a lockdown. So people, teams will use this as a bargaining chip, but I, I give it 12 months when Euros do come around and you see a highlight player, um, and we saw it with the most recent World Cup with Mbappe, um, you'll see a, a highlight player, and that's when you'll start to see the big money fly through again. Anyway, that's my opinion. I'm very, I'm very uh, emphatic when it comes to that. So, if I if I can uh, add just one thing, is um, interesting idea that I heard just this morning. I'm, I'm sure it's, it's going around for a while. I just heard this morning, but uh, it's um, the the idea to um, put a cap on the salary for each team. So, for example, I don't know, let's just say like 100, whatever, billion dollar, 100 billion, whatever money you want. Uh, but the idea is to put the same cup for every team of the league. So uh, that means that you're not going to have um, Juventus that spend three billions dollar and uh, Kievo that spend uh, peanuts, but they can spend all the same for the the salary of the players. And so some player have to decide, okay, I 
I'm gonna play for this team for uh, for other reason or like some team is gonna say okay we, we cannot invest all our money in the attack so we need one good striker and one uh, and one defender and that's where we're gonna put our salary um, money and uh, in this way it should bring some more balance on the league and uh, it's pretty much what's happening in the NBA here in the US uh, where the most of the players um, the, the good players are spread in every team and it's not just one team with all the good players um, so that that was like an interesting idea that I that I recently heard and I you know the more I think about it the more it makes sense and um, I don't know if we ever going to hmm. to uh, ad- adopt something like that in college, look, in, um, in soccer. Uh, look, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, I like the idea of the NBA where you have one player who has that max contract and then you've got the other players who are very handsomely paid, but at the same time, um, you know, you, you, you're sort of spreading the good players amongst all the teams. But you've got to remember, the NBA is just East and West. You're going to have all of Europe needing to, not all of just Europe, you're going to need basically every football league in the world adapting to the same sort of um, rhythm. And it's something that I can't see happening. You look at, um, let's say, for instance, Barcelona. They've got, um, they had at one point Suarez, Messi and Neymar. And they sell jerseys. They sell jerseys. And Ronaldo paid almost I think it was 85% of his transfer fee in the first two weeks via jersey sales. And, you know, it, it's it, it, it's something that needs to be agreed upon amongst not just all the clubs, but the players as well. Because you're going to have players who are getting paid very well right now. Well, look, we're going to be cutting back your wage and no one's going to like that because every other club's going to be doing the exact same thing. And it's like, well... What's the point? You look at you look at um, inter player, a former inter player and former inter captain, Maro Icardi. He used to say, "I don't play soccer because I don't play soccer. I don't play football because I love the sport. I play it because it puts money in my wallet. It puts food on my table." And unfortunately, in the times we're living in now, um, money is the biggest factor in the, all the leagues. Anyway, let's not dwindle on this because we can talk about money and what we think should happen until we're blue in the face. But in actual fact, we all know that most probably nothing's going to happen in this retrospect. Let's move on. Okay, so uh, going back to the interview, just you, and it was like a 20 minutes interview. Uh, we talk about the Lukaku conversation with Henry very briefly, um, and then we talk about um, the Serie A season, the current Serie A season, and I ask if you, if Fabrizio was in charge, uh, what he would like to do with the season, and then uh, he said basically that he personally will end that season to um, make sure that the next one we go uh, as it's supposed to, and uh, in that way, as we said, uh, that will also save the Euro Cup of uh, 2021. And um, and also because at the end of the day, you can end this season without supporters, but supporters is the main reason of this game. So, uh, so uh, sport uh, sport play without supporters is like it doesn't make any sense. And um, so that that's one of the main reason why I would like um, prefer to stop this season and wait. Uh, until September, October, when the situation is more clear and hopefully we have a vaccine or, or some solution and um, and then, you know, starts fresh. And the other reason, and I completely agree on that, 
is also because at this point um, it doesn't even make it doesn't make sense anymore. The previous season it, it feels like one year ago, and um, so I I asked four quick questions about the the current season, and uh, just to make sure that we still remember what happens because it really feels like a life ago. And uh, I honestly have to look up all the answers, and he couldn't remember anything either. So I bet if I make the same question to you guys, you still, you, you too have to look, look them up. Uh, but yeah, the whole idea is like, how would you manage the, this area season? And I think we pretty much uh, went over that too. Uh, I don't know if you guys, Anthony, if you want to add anything about that. So how would I manage the rest of the Serie A season? Is that what the question is? Correct. Oh, I would say to cancel it completely, to be honest. Like, nothing at the moment seems authentic in football. Um, I have a lot of friends who are Liverpool fans, and they all even agree, even if they were to be awarded the title right now, so much of the good feeling or emotion of breaking that streak has been taken away from it. It's almost like it'll read Liverpool champions 19, uh, uh, 2019 to 2020 with an asterisk next to it. You know what I mean? No trophy celebration in the streets, no parade, no lifting of the trophy, no awards ceremony, no nothing that really crowns you as an iconic, like that, you know what I mean? An iconic winner. So for me, they have to cancel it completely also because, especially in a league like Italy, there is no way that there is any definitive... Um, there's nothing that's definitive. Nothing's been decided. I mean, Juventus and Lazio are so close together. And yes, to an extent, we could also stake a claim and say that we are still in a title race because there are still so many games to go. It's not over yet. But you can't award any sort of placings as is. Um, in terms of alternative... Me- Methods of finishing the season, as Bruno said, it seems unre- as Bruno said earlier, it seems unrealistic to cram so many games into such a short amount of time. Uh, in you know, Italy still has Serie A, Serie B, C, D, which means they'll probably come close to having just as many games as what Bruno suggested earlier, something like 400, 500, 450 across the board of English games. Um, throughout all their divisions. So I really don't think it's productive. I think it's physically demanding and unfair on the athletes. I think that it comprom and as I said earlier, I think it really compromises the integrity of next season. It's like, wow, do, do you really want to have a real shitty quality, excuse my language, Campionato 2020, 2021 in all leagues across Europe and the world because you just you are so occupied and concerned with making something work with what, what's already a broken, shattered piece of glass of a season on the floor. Like, to me, it's done. It's been done for everybody for a long time. There's no point trying to get back to it for me. Bruno? Yeah, look, I agree. Um, if it was up to me, I did see um, a proposed structure earlier on when all of this first started to come to fruition. And it was in regards to relegation. No Serie A teams would be relegated and the top two teams of Serie B would be promoted. Um, Effectively adding more games to next year, which I am all for. Uh, Let's make the league a bit bigger. Let's, 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 Let's make it more challenging. And I'm all for that. Um, because no team in the Serie A deservedly should get relegated. We haven't played the full season. But at the same time, you should be able to encourage um, teams. Like, look at Benevento. You've got um, Pippo Inzaghi there coaching there, and he has done a fabulous job, and they are way on top. Yes, they should be promoted. Let's add that um, ecstasy to the teams who are coming up to allow them to um, have that, because it, finance really does play a lot when it comes to that stuff. Um, let's increase the season. In regards to Champions League and Europa League, all right, effectively, Inter, Lazio, Juventus have effectively qualified for Champions League. All right, I think we can all agree on that, Whether what, no matter what team you support. Atalanta and Roma, I think when the, when the dust does settle, could have a potential playoff game. 
to see who qualifies for Europe. In regards to the Europa League, there are two, um, three teams battling out two positions, and that is um, currently Roma, Milan, Napoli. Now, you've got to think, we don't really need to do much in that regards because the Coppa Italia has been scratched. So the Europa League position would go uh, go into the Serie A table. So effectively, the t- in my eyes, yes, the table should stay as it stands, but no winner should be recorded. And it should stay as it stands for European qualification, only because we've played more than 50% of the season. Now, if this happened, let's say, in... September, October, let's say October, November last year. Okay, we're, we're all going to have a different agreement here because ultimately you're going to have, um, you know, you could have had a swallow sitting on top after four or five games. But we've played more than 50% of the season. So effectively, we, 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 we know the general idea as to where the teams are sitting. So I just think let's cut it. Let's not jeopardize the integrity of the next season because the next season is going to be pivotal, pivotal, not just for the Serie A, but for every league throughout Europe, especially with players who are fighting to get into their national team. And if we jeopardize the integrity of the next season, you've got to think, how long is it until we get back to normal? Because like I said earlier, the following season, the 2020, uh, 2022 season, 2023 season, I think it is, um, where we will be playing, um, we'll be stopping the season effectively in Christmas to have a World Cup. Um, You know, it's a completely new structure and the World Cup is something that would economically ruin a lot of players, a lot of teams, a lot of everything because that's where most of the hype is generated from. Um, in regards to new rising players, current players, all of that stuff. So I think uh, let's cut it short. Let's finish it there because there's really nothing we can do. And why would we jeopardize the um, physique of our current players to squeeze in, um, you know, unprecedented amount of games just to make people happy? Um, If I can... uh sum up uh, what what I heard around basically uh, every every president uh, in Italy has a different opinion the Tito de Laurentiis uh, the Tito from Lazio de Laurentiis from Napoli are ready to go back uh, they were uh, asking to the to their players to go back training I think past week because they were saying that the situation in South and Center Italy is different from North Italy, which, in my opinion, is insane. Um, Atalanta players and uh, and coach, on the other hand, are saying that for what happened in Bergamo, it makes no sense at all playing this season. Uh, the federation is uh, in complete chaos. And um, and if you look around uh, in the, in the UK, pretty much the same situation. In Germany, it's like in Italy, some team are ready to to go back to, uh, and play. Some others are are desperate to just for a financial reason. And if you look at um, Bayern Monaco, I think they started this week with um, with training. And they train in group of five, and um, and uh, I think the first day of training, uh, Tolisso got injured right away. So I don't know in which condition these players are. Some of the players are coming back from their country, and they they need uh, two weeks of quarantine anyway. So it's it's up uh, all up in the air, but. Um, I was reading this article and um, on the, the journalist interview, former uh, sport director from uh, from Milan, um, Adriano Galliani. I don't know if you guys remember, um, but uh, he he made this. Uh, he had this idea basically to do like uh, in um, like they do in Brazil, where the basically it was the idea is to play Serie A 
in the from January to December, basically. And uh, so end this season whenever we can. Then from January to December, play the next one with a break in the middle so we can play the Euro Cup. And the next season uh, will be perfect because anyway, at the end of the year in December, uh, there will be the World Cup. <clears throat> and, uh, and then during the, the summer when it's, uh, it's too hot to play during the day, all the games will be played at night. So this, in my opinion, this was like a very interesting idea. And um, I don't know if it will ever be considered for um, many, many reasons. But um, the, the whole thing, in my personal opinion, as you guys said, we should end that season, just scratch it and uh, start the new one like this year never happened. So same team in Serie A, same team in Serie B, same team in Europe, whatever. Just cancel this season, start with a fresh one. Uh, but that will mean that all the team just in Serie A will lose 600 million uh, plus 400 probably. Um, so a lot of team, uh, you know, that's a theory. In reality, if you lose all that money, I don't know how some team can cope and if they're still able to to play, you know. So that's that's the tragic part. Um, speaking of just about football, because the real tragedy, everybody knows, you know. Um, so that's that's my opinion. Anthony, anything else to add? No, not really. Um, so that was pretty much it with the interview with Fabrizio. So thank you so much, for Alessandro, for taking that up. It's always really great to hear from him. Just overall, it's important to remember that, yeah, this is all very important, um, very serious what's going on. But, you know, it's, there's no reason to compromise more than, than we need to. I think that's the general consensus from all the three of us today. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Alessandro, was there anything else that Fabrizio and you chatted about before we say goodbye to our listeners? No, I think uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, if you speak any Italian, if you are learning Italian in this quarantine, that's something good to do. And uh, this is a perfect exercise for you. Perfect. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Alessandro. And thank you very much, Bruno, for coming on as well. Thank you for having me, Anthony. Always a pleasure. And just remember, guys, tune in. Watch the rest of the podcast that he be asking interview with Alessandro. Thank you again for doing that, mate. And Forza Inter. As always, Forza Inter sempre. Ciao, ragazzi. Eccoci qui. Buongiorno a tutti e buona serata. Siamo di nuovo in compagnia del nostro amico Fabrizio Biasini. Ciao Fabrizio, come stai? Ciao, ciao ragazzi, tutto bene più o meno qui dall'Italia, all'isolamento, siamo oltre un... 30 giorni di isolamento per cui insomma alla lunga ho un po' vi voglia di uscire al sole ma dobbiamo resistere e lo facciamo. Okay, quindi scusa se ti abbiamo interrotto fra un'uscita al parco e le discoteche. Eh, magari, magari. <ride> qui mi sa che le discoteche, no, insomma... ristoranti cose, mi sa che per, per qualche mese ce li dobbiamo dimenticare, ma lo sapete bene anche voi. Sì, però se... la situazione sta leggermente migliorando, no? Sì, diciamo che in questo momento c'è una fase di stabilità sui numeri che comunque rimangono sempre brutti, però non stanno crescendo, adesso aspettiamo la, la decrescita per provare a ritornare piano piano alla normalità, però questa è la cosa difficile da far capire alla gente, cioè non è che è come accendere o spegnere l'interruttore, eh, a un certo punto si potrà tornare più o meno alla vita normale, ma non sarà per, per qualche mese una vita normale come ce la ricordavamo fino a due mesi fa. Mm-hmm. Eh, allora... Um... Ho una domandina per te, vado subito, la tocco piano subito. Vai. Quando arriva Messi? <ride> Ma io non credo, 
Aspetta, posso... perché sem- sembra una domanda stupida, però c'ha un sacco di domande sotto che poi andremo un attimo a, a snidare. But... Sì, alle- ne ha parlato l'ex presidente Moratti l'altro giorno e devo dire che sotto traccia è una voce che gira da un po'. Eh, non in forma di notizia però c'è sempre quello che ti dice oh, ho sentito questa cosa pare che vogliano tentare pare che vogliano provare e io posso anche credere al fatto che ci sia una sorta di tentativo comunque una, una non negazione no? cioè, vediamo cosa succede però tutto è nella, nella testa di, di Messi e io non credo sinceramente che, che Messi eh, abbia intenzione di, di muoversi da, da Barcellona dopo tanti 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 anni di permanenza in quella squadra, in quella città cioè è più facile che cambi la, la presidenza e tutta la dirigenza piuttosto che Messi decida di andare via per come la vedo io credo che ci siano poche possibilità e non è una questione di carattere economico ovviamente ci sarebbe una problematica anche da quel punto di vista ma più che altro dipende dal fatto che Messi secondo me continuerà la sua carriera in Spagna poi io oh, abbiamo visto Ronaldo in Italia può capitare anche questa cosa ma io sinceramente non ci scommetterei dei soldi ok ma in realtà uh, volevo prendere questa domanda uh, come pretesto nel senso che um, dà un po' l'idea di come e quando si potrà tornare alla Serie A nel senso che um, una volta che si va a parlare un po' più nello specifico dovrebbe uh, aiutare a capire quando si ripartirà uh, e, e come sarà il, diciamo, il calcio mercato uh, tu hai, ti sei fatto un po' un'idea di cosa sta succedendo a, a questo livello nel senso Uh, anche oggi ho visto Tommasi che parlava un po' di bisogna ripartire, bisogna fermare. Uh, cosa, cosa sta succedendo? Perché qui arrivano uh, frammenti molto strani, nel senso che c'è chi va da, da una parte e chi da quella completamente opposta. Quindi riesce Sai, a chiarire un po' che succede. C'è, c'è chi parla di tentativi di, di ripartenza ed è normale perché prima o poi bisognerà provare a ricominciare con, uh, con il calcio però secondo me si sta facendo un ragionamento a, a lungo termine che, che è difficile da ipotizzare in, in questo momento oggi il presidente Lottito, il presidente della Lazio ha parlato di squadra che vuole tornare ad allenarsi e mi sembra veramente molto difficile così come è difficile eh, dar... Eh, credito a chi parla di stagione da terminare a, a tutti i costi io sono convinto che se vogliono trovare una soluzione la trovano ma non sarà una soluzione logica per come la vedo io perché ipotizzare di comprimere il resto della stagione in un paio di mesi con oltre 120 partite da giocare tutte a porte chiuse probabilmente in assenza di VAR con il rischio di andare a scontrarsi con la stagione 2021 che va assolutamente preservata, mi sembra un, un rischio ulteriore. Cioè qui eh, si, si, si vuole in tutti i modi tornare a giocare questa stagione e non si valuta il rischio di eh, dar fastidio alla, alla prossima. E quindi non lo so, io sono sinceramente in questo momento a, aspetto che qualcuno prenda delle decisioni eh, di, di, di qualunque genere nel frattempo ascolto le chiacchiere di questo e di quell'altro ma mi sembrano francamente chiacchiere perché poi bisogna fare i conti con la, con la realtà e la realtà è quella di, della gran parte della popolazione che è chiusa in casa, che perde denaro il calcio sembra l'unica attività che non vuole arrendersi rispetto a questa cosa è comprensibile ma io non, non riesco a vedere come, come si possa eh, evitare questo, questa cosa da qui sinceramente mm-hmm. eh, parlando un attimo adesso appunto come dicevi non si sa ancora bene niente okay, però uh, a livelli un po' più um, legali diciamo molti, molti giocatori uh, avranno il contratto uh, che finirà uh, normalmente nel senso quando doveva finire questa stagione. Cosa succederà a questo punto? Nel senso che 
uh, contratti sono quelli, verranno fatte estensioni, verrà trattato tutto come normale e soprattutto um, come, come sarà fatto il calciomercato, visto che mh, a parte i club uh, di top top, mh, della fascia top, non credo che altri avranno nessun, uh, nessun modo di, di, di acquistare o comunque di, di spendere soldi. Ma sai, allora, su quello si è già più o meno espressa se l'UEFA e anche la FIFA, cioè por- uh, arriveranno a prolungare i contratti in essere pur di arrivare pur di riuscire a terminare le, le stagioni delle varie leghe nazionali e a, alla fine di, di questa cosa si procederà con un mercato un, un po' strano no? che potrebbe anche durare più del, più del previsto io credo che sarà un, un mercato atipico io non riesco a immaginare operazioni da decine e decine di milioni perché tutte le società dovranno far fronte alla, alla, alla situazione no? e quindi è più facile immaginarsi tanti scambi o giocatori che magari avevano intenzione di andare da altre parti che invece restano nelle, nelle rispettive squadre. Eh, il problema dei, dei, ci sono tanti club che sono importanti come non so, l'Inter, la Juventus, che hanno dei problemi che forse sono le, limitati rispetto ai problemi che possono avere tutti gli altri club, qui in questo momento più che parlare di mercato si deve provare a ragionare sulla sopravvivenza di tante squadre che in questo momento sono veramente in difficoltà e stiamo parlando di squadre di Serie A e soprattutto di B, C e a scendere e quindi secondo uh-huh. me bisogna, bisogna cominciare a ragionare sul fatto che eh, la, la pro- quest'estate sarà decisiva per, per tanti motivi ma soprattutto deve essere la, l'estate della rinascita, cioè cominciare a ragionare su un calcio diverso dove non girano decine di milioni di commissioni ai, agli agenti di calciatori, dove i, i prezzi in qualche maniera si, si abbasseranno per forza di cose. Mm-hmm. Um, un'altra cosa, um, come allora recentemente è uscito questo è uscito insomma c'era questo video di, di Lukaku in conversazione con, uh, con Henry uh, l'hai visto hai qualcosa da dire al riguardo perché ha, ha fatto una sì. serie di uh, punti molto a mio pa- punto di vista dal mio punto di vista molto intelligenti ma allora ovviamente è stato mal interpretato perché intanto eh, siamo tutti molto ignoranti e nessuno di noi conosce il, il francese e quindi ci siamo limitati a traduzioni sommarie e da queste traduzioni invece di, di trarre il buono del, del ragionamento di, di Lukaku abbiamo voluto, o meglio qualcuno ha voluto eh, creare una polemica con, con la Juventus in realtà eh, chi ha capito quello che Lukaku voleva dire eh, si è reso conto che invece Luca Co aveva le idee chiarissime e, ed, era, ed è stato esemplare rispetto a quello che ha detto. Cioè, purtroppo si è atteso molto prima di eh, interrompere eh, le, le competizioni e questa cosa è costata tanto. E, e quindi semplicemente quel, tutto quello che ha detto Lukaku ha veramente tanto buon senso. Io mi auguro che tanti giocatori la, la pensino come lui, anche adesso che bisogna ragionare su ricominciare ad allenarsi e ritornare a una pseudo normalità. Purtroppo non è eh, così semplice e c'è chi l'ha capito, c'è chi invece ancora fa finta che sia tutto normale. Ultimo paio di domande. Uh, se um, dipendesse da te, se tu decidessi le sorte della Serie A, eh. Champions League e tutto... Uh, le faresti finire ad oltranza settembre, ottobre, novembre, quello che è, o finiresti la stagione uh, di, mh, 2019-2020, uh, la dichiareresti nulla uh, e ripartiresti a settembre o quando è uh, da, con la nuova stagione, o che, che cosa faresti, insomma? Ma mi piacerebbe molto credere in una possibile ripartenza, no? T- tanti ci, ci sperano e, ha, e chi, chi deve decidere ci sta dicendo che ci proveranno in tutti i modi e, e quindi noi a- aspettiamo che, che, che si possa verificare questa cosa. Io personalmente penso che sia difficile e controproducente perché 
per tutto quello che ti dicevo prima, l'idea di un campionato eh, diciamo com- compresso in, in due mesi, con così tante partite, Dopo due mesi di, di interruzione, quindi ragioneremo su squadre che hanno un'altra condizione fisica, e giocatori che in questo momento sono all'estero, che devono tornare a fare la quarantena, secondo me a un, a un certo punto bisogna arrendersi e cercare il minore dei mali. Secondo me il minore dei mali è decidere che questa stagione è finita e cominciare a programmare la prossima e limitare i danni. Come? in mille modi, cioè bisogna arrivare a un taglio degli stipendi dei, dei giocatori, in questo modo i bilanci non saranno mai eh, buoni ma non saranno né terribili come, come, come si pensa e si può pensare a una stagione, la 2021, con eh, dei tentativi per renderla più, più appetibile, non so, aprendo alle sponsorizzazioni, cercando di fare qualcosa per, per ripartire. Accanirsi su questa stagione mi sembra molto illogico. Poi magari succede un miracolo e si torna in campo e sarà tutto bellissimo. Però in questo momento mi sembra che si stia cercando di far prevalere la logica eh, dell'economia a tutti i costi e degli interessi personali. Quelli dei, dei club che vogliono eh, vincere il loro scudetto o vogliono evitare la retrocessione, eccetera, eccetera, eccetera. Rispetto a problemi che stiamo affrontando tutti quanti, anche i presidenti dei club devono secondo me fare un passo indietro anche perché oltre a tutto ciò cioè, sarà da recuperare eh, l'europeo e poi ci saranno i mondiali la stagione successiva quindi eh, sì, sarà veramente tappo... difficile riuscire c'è già un tappo eh, anche perché prossima... i mondiali della... scusa dicevo vai, sulla vai, prossima vai. stagione c'è già un tappo cioè l'inizio dell'europeo 2000 e 21 e questo significa che non si può neanche troppo andare lunghi perché eh, altrimenti ripeto si rischia di, di dar fastidio alla prossima stagione che non, non può essere compromessa in, in partenza l'idea di giocare quest'estate a, a 30 gradi in continuazione eh, si può fare eh, per amore del cielo perché ci stanno dicendo che lo vogliono fare quindi evidentemente si può fare però per come la vedo io dovessero anche farlo non, non si potrebbe parlare di, di calcio il calcio è uno spettacolo e giocare ogni 72 ore a raffica a porte chiuse con 30 gradi senza VAR non è calcio no, una tortura più che altro sì. uh, e comunque sia anche se, a mio, dal mio punto di vista a questo punto la stagione sarebbe così influenzata eh, insomma lo spirito dei giocatori eh, senza i tifosi a supporto insomma sarebbe sì, anche uno perché insomma, orribile, insomma. È, è una disciplina, cioè è, è, è uno sport, lo sport in teoria è un gioco, la definizione si, si parla di gioco calcio ed è fatto in funzione dei tifosi, se i tifosi vengono esclusi da questa cosa allora bisogna essere molto chiari, si fa semplicemente per cercare di non smenarci troppi milioni, ma c'è un'alternativa, c'è un altro modo, puoi decidere di eh, risparmiare sugli stipendi e provare a ripartire in quella maniera lì e dal, a monte ti dicono c'è un'altra problematica perché tanti club eh, farebbero ricorso e quindi si finirebbe nei, nei tribunali e anche questa è una cosa da, da tenere in considerazione non si capisce però perché eh, tutte le altre aziende del paese stanno cercando o hanno trovato dei compromessi e invece il calcio continui a litigare e non si riesce, non si riesce mai a trovare un accordo di, di qualche genere. Mm-hmm. Ma, um, a, a dimostrazione di, del fatto che eh, forse ormai questa stagione è già andata in, in archivio, almeno nelle nostre menti, almeno nella mia testa, volevo farti quattro domande veloci per vedere a che punto sei, uh, sì. co- cosa ti ricordi della Serie A che era in corso. Quindi, eh, non mi ricorderò niente, eh, lo so già. Quanti... Io ho dovuto guardare tutto, onestamente. Però, eh, quanti punti di differenza al momento ci sono tra eh, la corsa tra la Champions League e la Coppa UEFA? Allora, quindi tra l'Atalanta diciamo, e, la, e la Roma? Potrei esatto. dirti, potrei dirti boh, 4 punti? Non lo so, forse 4 punti. Eh, molto vicino. Tre punti, tre punti, tre punti tre però punti. l'Atalanta è una partita in meno. E questo allora, per esempio non me lo ricordo. Seconda domanda. Esatto. Seconda domanda. Chi è al momento l'allenatore dell'Udinese? 
Ah, l'allenatore dell'Udinese, è... oh, sai che non mi ricordo neanche il nome, comunque è subentrato a... 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 dopo poche giornate a Tudor, non mi ricordo il nome, sai, con la G, con la G, vai con la G. Bravo, Luca Gotti. Gotti, Gotti, esatto, Gotti, che non voleva neanche allenare, si è ritrovato ad allenare per forza e alla fine c'era ragione lui, non doveva allenare esatto. perché gli hanno, gli hanno interrotto la stagione. Poi vediamo, uh, le ultime due, qual è stato l'ultimo risultato utile del Milan? Allora, il Milan, il Milan ha perso l'ultima con il Genoa in casa a San Siro, già, già a porte chiuse e quella precedente mm-hmm. probabilmente l'ha pareggiata, forse, Bravo. con il Torino. Sì, sì, Torino? sì, giustissimo. Eh. Contro la Fiorentina, ah, la Fiorentina, Fiorentina 1-1, no, e esatto. Genova uh, in casa uh, ha perso 2-1. Esattamente. Bravissimo. Io non mi ricordavo assolutamente niente. E l'ultima, che sarebbe essere abbastanza facile, chi è in testa nella classifica dei, eh, degli assist? Allora, la classifica degli assist, dovrei saperlo, fammi pensare. Eh... Beh, pensa un po', eh, non so, a me è venuto abbastanza facile. Ma, eh... In automatico, allora sì. andiamo su. Allora, guarda, anche la condizione, tutto. ti dico l'Atalanta perché ha fatto 2000 gol, quindi ci sarà qualcuno che ha fatto tanti assist. Non so se boh, Ilicic, boh, farò caso. c'è un, un calciatore, un calciatore eh, non dell'Atalanta. Sì. Eh, che ha fatto meglio, un centrocampista che ha, sta avendo una stagione fantastica. Ah, Luis Alberto. Eh, no. eh, bravissimo, bravissimo. Sì, tro- 11 tro- assist di Luis Alberto e poi c'è Papu Gomez con 8. Ah, fantastico. E, eh, non so niente, come Pellegrini con 8. Non mi, ric- pure non mi ricordavo niente. Ma no, guarda, onestamente ho dovuto controllare tutto perché eh, sembra veramente un anno fa ormai e, e quindi eh, per che io a, dico, anche per anche questo... Per ricominciare significa praticamente affrontare un'altra stagione, non è, non è più la stessa stagione, esatto. quindi anche da questo punto di vista avrebbe veramente poco senso. Esatto. Va bene Fabrizio, so che devi andare, anzi ti ho rubato anche fin troppo tempo, uh, grazie mille, e spero di risentirti di nuovo magari la prossima volta quando sei fuori con un sacco di persone. <ride> allora mi sa che ci sentiamo fra un po', <ride> perché <ride> purtroppo sarà un estate... O magari allo stadio, chissà quando. Eh, quello magari, volentieri, volentieri, mi piacerebbe moltissimo, purtroppo per un po' no... Le partite saranno a porte chiuse e c'è poco da fare. Quindi, ripeto, anche, anche per questo parlare di calcio è veramente difficile in questo momento. Eh, vabbè, ma sai com'è? Abbiamo un sacco di tempo da passare a casa, almeno uh, facevo passare sognando, ricordando quando si giocava il gioco del calcio. Esattamente, <ride> esattamente. Tornerà, tornerà. Va bene Fabrizio, grazie mille e buon proseguimento. È un piacere, grazie a voi. Ciao, ciao.